Okay, so today we're going to talk about geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. And we're going to take it slow and start with uh, just one specific one. I'll get more into it in just a moment. But I want to talk about what we've said so far about tolerancing. So I have um, a cylinder I want to create, and I'm given an upper and lower tolerance as shown here. And I want to create appropriate shapes that are acceptable based on this tolerance. So if it has to be between 0.75 and 0.755, would you agree that, assuming I draw this perfectly on the line and not outside of it, but that's a good cylinder. It's inside that tolerance, right? Good this also. You know, my intention is to be right on this line, so. But that also be a good cylinder. I see some heads shaking. So it's in between the 0.75 and it's in between the 0.755. Would that be a good cylinder? Does it stay between 0.75 and 0.755? I intend for it to <laughs> anyways. My sketching might not be perfect. But yeah, it's still in between there. So play around with this a little bit then. How about that one? That's still between, right? Or maybe... That one? I could go all day. What about... Keep in mind with the surface texture and the micro inches, we could have differences in the texture. That's still a good part, right? It's still falling between those two. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at our first geometric dimensioning and tolerance feature, which is straightness. So a lot of, sometimes the drawing size tolerance is not enough. We want to apply extra tolerancing because we want to make sure that, for example, that it doesn't vary too much in between the tolerances. So again, the first one we'll look at today is straightness. So um, whenever I uh, am in a class and I see somebody pull up a PowerPoint, first thing I always do is look at the lower left corner to see how many slides there are, to th see how long this is going to take. I just saw John's eyes get big. So John just saw 141 slides. I assure you I'm not going through 141. That's what I'm going to go through in the full lesson of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. So just wanted to say that in case any of you saw that and checked out and went ahead and closed your eyes. So, okay. So with traditional dimensioning, a lot of times we don't talk about datums. Um, and maybe we assume them. So for example, I can see a lot of dimensionings, dimensions are coming off of the top here. So this is probably a datum. In geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, where necessary, we are going to specify datums. And we're going to relate dimensions to those datums. Now some GDNT symbols do not require a datum. For example, straightness that we're talking about, I don't have to have a datum applied to it. But I'll give you an example of one that we'll see later on. Parallelism. I might have. I want. I might want to control how. Well, I can even. If I switch back to the right button here. I might want to control not only the tolerance value, but how parallel of the top. Now, this is a cylinder, so not a good example. Let's pretend it's a rectangular prism. How parallel is the top to the bottom? So that might help me avoid some of this kind of stuff. So if I'm going to say the top is parallel to the bottom by a certain amount, then I'm going to call out the bottom as a datum. And then I'll have a parallel um, that relates to datum A, as we learned about these control frames, and some amount of tolerance value for how parallel it needs to be. So we'll hit datums a little more coming up. 
hit the wrong button. Sorry. And uh, but today we'll we'll focus more on straightness and just getting to know these a little bit. So a few examples, just like what you saw me sketch out here. These would all be good parts because they all fall within that tolerance. But we're going to further limit the ability of it to change between these values. So just a general definition of GD and T, the maximum permissible variation of form, profile, orientation, location, and run out from an indicated uh, or specified on the drawing. So ours will be a variation of form is what we're starting with. So how different is the straightness? We'll also later be able to locate and orient things as well with dimensions and control them. This is an example of most of the GD and T symbols. We will hit most of them. We won't get to all of them. Um, I want to give you a, a good overall understanding of them and try a lot of them out, but just in the interest of time, we won't hit every little detail. We actually used to have a GDNT three credit hour class, and, and that's all it was. So, so we'll spend quite a bit of time with this, but we won't hit every single one. And like I said, we're going to start out up top with the form, and we're going to start with straightness and how straight something is. So in order to do this, we're going to have a feature control frame. And the feature control frame is, is going to have different symbols and values in it. We'll start with the geometric characteristic symbol. So that particular one is a location one. Uh, we'll be doing straightness to begin with. And the next box will have a tolerance value. We might also have other symbols. So uh, in some cases, the tolerance zone is a circular zone. So we'll have a diameter symbol. We won't have that today. Um, and then in some cases, we want to refer to the maximum material condition. So we've talked about that already. Uh, we'll actually talk a little bit more about the MMC today, but we have a symbol for the MMC. And then if we're doing one that references datums, we'll actually throw those out behind there too. And it's also in order. So I've got to set it on datum A first, then B, then C is what this is saying. But again, for straightness, we won't have those datums. So starting with the form tolerances, specifically straightness today, with the straightness value, we're just going to be more precise on how it can vary from a straight plane of existence. And this is only any given line on this plane. We'll later, actually the next one, next class, we'll talk about flatness, where we talk about the entire surface as one. But here we're just saying any given cross section. We're going to look at the straightness, and that's what this X indicates over here on the side view. It just happens to be cutting right through there. So on any given straight line through there, I have a straightness value of 0.003, three thousandths. Now if you look at the tolerance value, it's six thousandths. So if we think of my example that I had a while ago, this is going to help me narrow down that area that it can vary. So let's look at some examples. Again, here's my minimum size, which would be the 1.5, and my maximum size, which would be the 1.506. And then I want to apply this tolerance zone to it as well. Now this tolerance zone can float around anywhere within that 0 0.06. So it doesn't have to be perfectly parallel. It just says that within that 6 thousandths range, nothing can vary more than 3 thousandths. So if you look at this example, if this is the uh, zone of the 0 0.003, every little edge fits inside that zone. So I'd have a good part. So let's back up a second before I go on. Does that make sense, what I'm saying there? So again, it would help me eliminate things like this one right here. So if I add a point. 003 tolerance zone, I have to have some range in here where this all fits. And that's not going to happen with this one because it varies 0 0.005. If I look at something like this one, it might still be a good part because I might be able to have a tolerance zone 0 0.003 apart that all those pieces still fit in. So this one could still be a good part. But these two up here, that one definitely isn't because I can't have a, a 003 tolerance zone that that fits in. 
Oops. Okay, so when we're using this control frame, and we'll talk in just a little bit about how to functionally do it in AutoCAD, you're going to point to the surface that's being controlled. And one of the rules of straightness is perfect form at MMC. So what that means is I am assuming that if this part is the largest it could be, this 0.755, it is not going to have any variation at all. It's got to be perfect. It can't expand out past the 0.755. So if it's maximum material condition, it's got to be perfect. Does that make sense? Okay. So if that's the case, then, if I look at what my actual tolerance of this top surface is, at MMC, it's zero. It can't vary any more than that. So if I bring it down 1 thousandths to 0 0.505, then my tolerance can be 1 thousandth. If I bring it down another, I can be down to 2 thousandths. Another, down to 3 thousandths. However, this controls it and says it can't go beyond 3 thousandths. So as I get a smaller part, it continues to stay at 3 thousandths. So I got one more. we'll look at little step-by-step step here. So here's my part between 1.5 and 1.506. So there's a representation of what that can look like. Once I throw my straightness tolerance of three thousandths on it, it cannot vary any more than that. So I've got a little tolerance zone there of three thousandths. And I apply that in here and as you can see that's not a good part. I can't create a tolerance zone in there that's going to include every little piece. That is a bad part. And again, I take that tolerance zone and move it a different way. Still not fitting. Still a bad part. So one of the things you will be asked to do today is, is calculate the tolerance of a surface. So since I have perfect form at maximum material condition, I have no tolerance at all. It's got to be perfect. As soon as I make this part a little smaller, 1.505, then this is my tolerance zone. It can vary within here. And that tolerance zone, as I subtract these two, is 1,000. So if I actually bring it down another thousandths, I've got a tolerance range here of two thousandths. It can vary anywhere within there and still be a good part. So again, the maximum minus that value gives me my two thousandths. As I go down to 1.503, I've got a three thousandths tolerance here. So it can vary completely within there. Again, subtract those two. That's where the 3,000s come from. Now, I've gone even smaller. So by our tolerances, still a good part. 1.502 fits in our tolerance. However, because of that straightness value, it's not free to roam around between these 4,000s. It still has to stay between the 3,000s. Does that make sense? So by the part tolerance, it can vary four thousandths, but because we've added the additional straightness, it's got to stay within three thousandths. So that means our tolerance is three thousandths. So even though I subtract the difference is four thousandths, it can't exceed three thousandths. Our tolerance is three thousandths. Again, same situation. This time these values vary five thousandths, but my tolerance says it can't exceed three thousandths. So my tolerance is three thousandths. And then down at LMC or least material condition, again, same idea. The tolerance is six thousandths, but I can't exceed that three thousandths. So it has to stay within three thousandths to be a good part. We can also apply it to a cylinder. It's very similar. So again, I'm just straightness pointing to an edge with the tolerance. Still got perfect form at MMC. So very similar idea this time since it caps off at two thousandths. It repeats two thousandths after that. And let me get into flatness, but we'll come back to the other ideas in just a second. The other thing I want to point out too is back up here just a second. There we go. So I want to point out what this is saying. second here while I sketch up a similar one.
Okay, so we got straightness. Okay, so I've got a straightness value of 0 0.003. And you were given an example too on the slide where it was just basically taking any cross section and saying that at that point the straightness can't vary past the point 0 0.003. I want to also remind you guys of, this was on the test, but the lay of the manufacturing that's happening. So the uh, machining process has a lay. So I want to make sure that I, I keep that in mind because I can have more variations going this way than going this way at any given point because of the lay. But when I'm pointing to this surface, I, I just want to point out, we'll talk about flatness next time, I'm just talking about any given cross section. So if I look at it from a top view, let's say it looked, I guess if I was going to match my side view, it should be three boxes wide. I'm just stupid. Okay, so when I'm saying the straightness and I'm pointing to this edge, since this edge is going left to right, then that means that I'm talking about any left to right surface or, or line cross section up on top. So it's actually pointing to this edge, it's going left right. So it's not controlling the straightness going this way is what I'm trying to say. If I wanted to control the straightness going this way, then I would be putting the note on this area right here. So this is pointing to that surface, then it's controlling it going this direction. So it's not the same thing, but just point to the top. You gotta actually think about which direction we're controlling. Does that make sense to you guys? So this also means, and you're gonna see this on an exercise here in just a little bit, that if I am pointing to this top edge, let me actually, let me change this value here just so I have a different value. I'll put that at two thousandths. So as I'm pointing to this top edge, then I'm controlling it in this direction. An alternative way to show this I'm just going to make a new rectangle here since that one's all sloppy now. Is I can show a little leader going each direction. And I can call out its flatness this way. So these two are saying the same thing. So as I go left to right on the top, any given cross section, the flatness has to stay within the point zero, zero, 003. So this one, the two thousandths, it would be the same if you put it up here like so. So those two symbols mean the same exact thing. Notice that as I point to this, I don't use a leader. Functionally in AutoCAD, I'll use the leader and explode it and delete the little arrow and then just leave the arrow heads on these shapes here. Right. Let's look at how to make these in AutoCAD then. So in your, well, actually, let me just start with one off of the ANSI template, which is what I've done here. Um, this was off of the ANSI template. Um, I'm going to put in my feature control frames in the dimension layer. And the feature control frame, I don't think it's here. You, ha you have to get it from the annotate tab. So if you go to the annotate tab and then choose the dimensions drop down, the very first button in here is your feature control frame for tolerance. So I'll just choose that one. Then it brings up a dialog box. And in the dialog box, I can go ahead and choose what I want to put in. I don't have to put in every little thing here. So we're, ours is going to be pretty simple. We're just doing straightness and a tolerance value. So in the first box for symbol, I'll click on there and it gives me all my choices. So there's my straightness symbol. Then I can put in a tolerance value. The box right in front of it is if I want to put, if it has a diametrical shape, which we don't yet. We'll see that one later. So now I'll just simply put in the straightness value. Now there's more things I can add in. I can add in the MMC or LMC, or regardless of feature size, we'll talk about that more coming up. And then I can also reference datums, A, B, and C 
for example. And again, we'll talk about those more coming up. But really, right now, we're just looking at the straightness symbol and the tolerance value. So when I click OK, I get a little feature control frame that I can then click to place on screen. Then I just want to put in a leader with no text. So I'm going to use my multi-leader tool. I'm going to shift right click snap to nearest. Click on this top surface and then bring my leader up. Now, I can't snap perfectly to it, but I'll just place my leader first. Click away from it to not place any text and then I'll move this feature control frame. Now the left side actually has a grip on the middle so you can align it that way. But I'll also show you that had I created my leader over here and I wanted to attach this feature control frame, there's no grip but you can use the move command and snap to the midpoint and then click to place it. So I want to be clear that this is not acceptable it doesn't set on the leader and come off of the corner. It needs to be going to the middle of the box. So again, straightness 0 0.003, and I, I could also put the arrows on top and show it that way as well if I wanted to. Why might I want to do it the other way? Um, maybe I have a drawing that only requires one or two views, and I don't want to create another view just to point to an edge. We'll see an exercise like that in just a moment. So here is the plan for today. I think these will go pretty fast for you guys because most of them you're just adding a little control frame or two. It's just a matter of understanding where they should go and how to use them. Um, I might be experiencing a crash here. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm back. Okay, so when you go to new, and then our templates folder, there is a chapter 16 GDT folder in here. And then furthermore, it's broken down by each little unit. We're in the first one, 16-2 on straightness. And you'll find five templates in here. And you're gonna do these five templates and these are just gonna be printed off on the laser jet back here. We won't be printing them on the big one. Um, so let me start with the first one. And please, don't get started on this. Please just watch and listen until I get through all five of them. So this one, quite simply, surface A is to have a straightness tolerance of 0 0.004. So there's surface A. You simply need to add a control frame of 0 0.004 straightness to that surface. Now these title blocks, these are the older ones. So you'll have to use your text tool to put in the, the uh, initials there. These don't have attributes. Um, so that was pretty simple. One control frame, leader, print. So let's look at the next one. Part two. Surface M is to have a straightness tolerance of 0 0.006 and surface N is to have a straightness tolerance of 8 thousandths. So two control frames. Again, not super hard. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so in this one, surface R is to have a straightness tolerance within six thousandths for direction A and two thousandths for direction B. So I have already put in the arrows here, so you can just use your leader um, and your control frame. Now if I'm using my leader, I'll snap to the middle and bring this up and then explode it. I like the X key, but there's the button. And then just erase this arrowhead. Let me reattach it then. So you can just create a leader like so with the control frame. Now technically, surface B right here would be this surface right here, right? So I could also call that out. I'm going to my annotate tab. That could also be B. Would you guys agree with that? It's the same surface. It's going up and down. This edge is going up and down. On A, again, I can add in this little leader. I can't show A over here. This is the same surface, but in this view, it would be coming out at us, right? The only way I could show A with a leader is if I had a top view. If I had the top rectangular view, 
then I could call it out on the front surface here, right? Because it's going left and right like this arrow. So pointing to this surface would be the same as pointing to this guy. Is that confusing at all? Does that make sense? Okay, if you're getting confused while you work on it, let me know. Okay, two more. They don't get really much more difficult, but a few more things that you gotta add to them as we go. So on part four, this is kinda like the table that I had in my slides, which by the way, I'll uh, go and turn on in Learning Zone so that you can pull those down if you want. Uh, but here we're told that the part has a tolerance zone of eight thousandths, plus or minus 0 0.004. However, the straightness must stay within 0 0.002. So if I'm at point one or 1.504, that's maximum material condition, right? It's the biggest it can be. Perfect form, so it's gotta be zeros, right? As I come down one, what would my tolerance be? As I come down two thousandths, what would it be? As I come down three thousandths, what would it be? Or four thousandths that actually skip? Exactly, so it's gonna continue being two because it can't exceed this one. And that's where people get tricked tripped up they just keep subtracting but remember it cannot exceed this value so that's all you got to do on that one pretty much just gave the answers there and then the final one this one already has some straightness applied to it so i've got oops looks like the viewport when you guys come in here it looks like the viewport's not uh locked or yeah I should lock the viewport so watch out for that when you come in here okay so I'm told that the, the this edge right here has a straightness tolerance of 0.1 and this front edge has a straightness of 0.13 this object surface going this direction is 0 0.00 or 0 0.03 and the same edge but going the other direction is 0 0.05. So what you're to do on this one is as we look at the dimensions, if we were looking from a pure dimensional standpoint, is the top view necessary? No, right? There's no dimensions on it. We can get everything from these two views and contour rule. We'd rather put them on this view than this one. So you're going to eliminate that top view. So that means all these straightness values need to go on these other views. So you've got to figure out what edges should I be pointing to? So for example, this edge and this edge are the same as this surface right here, but one is going this direction and one is going that direction. So which should go where? And you could just reuse these control frames if you want. Also want to remind you, this was on the test, not a good leader, right? Can't cross dimension lines. So a lot of people try to do that on this one. So again, all five of those, uh, you'll have to throw your initials in there and then print them out on the laser jet, and that's it. So I'll get those slides up in case any of you want to look at those while you're working, and then we'll do those and print and turn in, and then I'll see you guys on Monday.